All right. We got a. Uh, I did not create this armbar. I didn't make this armbar. Go ahead and stop that. That's good. Um, but it's been dubbed the Bushido armbar because we've been down there wrecking shop on everybody with it. Uh, one of the things that I, I learned early on when I started doing the BJJ competition and, and fighting with those guys and training with those guys and learning with those guys is they don't recognize Kesa Katami as a pin. They don't recognize it as a control position. You get no, in a tournament, you know, you get points, just like if you're gonna do judo, you get a pawns and wizard. Well, they don't give you any points for this position because they don't recognize it as a control position. Where's, who's we been, where's that okay that everybody's been tossing around? Yeah, come here, bud. <laughs> so it, it's, on your back, please. It's crazy that I can come up like this and get my two points. This is a control position. But if I lock somebody in one of the most dominant judo pins in the world that's held thousands of people to Osai Komi all the way to Ipon, I get no points for it. So what we started doing since they have no skill sets to get out of this hold is we're controlling this arm. And we're bending it down. I'm setting the leg over the arm. You've seen this arm bar before, but I'm just going to show you a little way to make it real nasty. Hang on, Joe. <laughs> S grip your hands. Do what I call an S grip. And I'm going to cock his head not up and not over, but slightly at an angle. So what I do is I teach it in one, two, three. One is set the arm. Two is grab the leg. I get flexible guys that as I start, they'll slip that arm out of there real quick before you get it set. So two is set the arm. Now I'm going to take him down to where he's, he's taut. He's not tapping, but I can tell his arm is tight. I'm not going to move my leg, but I'm going to lift his head. And I'm getting my tap. The other thing is when I started doing this on big guys, the reason this came up is big guys were actually rolling me over. A guy Nick size, Nick would take my leg, crunch me into a ball and roll me over. So this stops that roll. Roll over your shoulder. Well, no. Nope. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> so when you set it, set it one, set it two, set it three. So all this past 10 years, they've dubbed this the Bushido armbar. Watch out for it. They're training for it. I got guys calling me and asking me to do seminars so they can learn how to get out of it. I'm like, just learn how to get out of a case before it's set. <laughs> Best defense, don't be there. Don't get there. When you get there, you're in trouble. So then they made a rule. We made too many Gracie schools cry, too many Gracie bar schools cry. Now, as soon as we get case of Katami, oh, no, 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 no. You, you're beating people with that. We need to make a rule. So as soon as we get case of, they're stopping us dead in the match and making us hook it here. Which, because we're cranking the neck, and it's not a neck crank. In order to crank the neck, I have to apply it all the way. I'm holding his head this much. Is your neck being cranked? No. The reason it gets bad is because the arm bar is set. So if I cock that up, and again, it, it, it won't go any further than that. I'm not crank. Now, if I... But if you're cranking the neck, you can't do that anymore. So they make us let it go. Well, for about a year, I was stumped because it does nullify that neck and head control. It takes away, when I'm trying to do this, guys turn in and they're getting that arm out or their they're, biggest thing they're doing is reaching up here and grabbing their hands and finding a way out. So I finally come up with a solution. So you can try it both ways. If you end up in a modified case, if you end up in a case, but as you're applying it, uh, Throughout life at, Bush, at, at, at Windsong, one guy at some point in life said, drive the leg down. <laughs> that tapped some people out. But I had flexible people that would skate out of it. One of the big guys at some point in life says, oh, no, 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 roll your hips forward like this. <laughs> well, I found over, you, when you're small, you got to modify everything. I start rolling my hips, people were rolling me over their head. And then I found out one way works on some people, doesn't work on the other. So I thought, <laughs> Well, if this way taps those people out, this way taps those people out, and I never know who's those and who's who. I started doing both. <laughs> Driving the leg and lifting the hips. But when you get into modified quesa, pick up on the shoulder. And that was the answer to not having the neck. It is nowhere near as effective. And I don't want to be behind his head. I'm kind of off to the side, just like where I'm at. S grip it, cock it sideways, go slow. Drive it down. So set it up in one, two, three. Uh, I guess the only other thing I do, 
is I never count on getting this arm all the way to the floor. Everybody's bigger than me, everybody's stronger than me. So I count on getting it about a foot off the floor. Then I rock up. One, two, three, and I always control the head first. Then I start my double movement. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let that go, you can't hold the head, okay. Squeeze the shoulder to you, do the same thing. The Bushido armbar, as they call it. The whole BJJ community dubbed it after my school. That was around a long time before me. It's just a key lock from Casey Katami. But thank you for letting me save face and walk off the mat without tears. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.